Hi, welcome to another edition of the Alan Rosenberg Show. So after doing this for almost three years and approaching 300 videos, the other day I did my first unboxing video, the Stone's Hackney Diamonds. And uh, I saw on other channels, you know, people seem to really like unboxing videos. For whatever reason, I just never did them. So what the hell? I got a package in the mail today. It's going to be a surprise, but uh, not too big of a surprise, as you can see the background here. But yeah, I've been holding off on this purchase uh, from earlier in the year, and uh, there was a little bit of a price drop. It doesn't look like it's going to be dropping much, so I decided, let me pull the trigger for what I'm missing, uh, the latest Jethro Tull box. And as you can see, I love Jethro Tull. This is a collection of most of my Tull box sets. Uh, up there, I got the Zelagene and Rock Flute, the box sets, and uh, some other ones as well. So... I gotta tell you, man, look at this packaging. So this is a fairly expensive box and they stuck it in bubble wrap, not even a box. Can you believe that? Hopefully it's not damaged. So this is live and hopefully it's the right thing and it is. Nothing in this, just, but luckily it looks like it's in relatively good shape. So there it is, the latest edition of the Jethro Tull boxes that I have been saying is really the best uh, reissue series I think out there. I think each one of these is just incredible. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So this is the 14th in the series and they're, they're each for one for each album. Pretty much in chronological order. Um, and this is the latest one. Uh, Broadsword and the Beast. Um, the 40th Anniversary Monster Edition. The original album, Associated Recordings, 1980 German Concert Performances, Mixed to stereo and surround sound by Stephen Wilson. This is the biggest box out of all of these as far as the amount of discs that are in them. This is just a really big box. There are five CDs, five CDs and three DVDs. So, um, and a 164 page book. Um, when you think about the price of these Jethro Tull boxes, at least when they come out, um, they're really pretty reasonable. 50, 60 something dollars. This one was more. But uh, I never, I just have showed these in other videos, but never really went through them. And that's why I figured this is a good one to do an unboxing because we're going to go through this box, you know, relatively quickly, hopefully. So it's not too boring. But you can see what they put on these boxes and the value for the money and the amount of work that goes into these things really extraordinary um so uh, i thought this would be a good unboxing so what i'm gonna do uh i'm gonna open this up out of the shrink here and same style as these but a lot more discs as you can see so this is Broadsword and the Beast, a little back history. So my favorite tall period is 77 Songs from the Woods, 78 Heavy West, 79 Stormwatch. And then Ian Anderson in 80, right? I think it was 80. He was going to do his first solo record. Well, it wasn't. He They put it out as a tall album, A, uh, which was a very different kind of an album compared to the three tall albums before that. Um different lineup and again it was supposed to be solo so now it's two years later it's 1982 and now he puts together a brand new Jethro Tull band love the artwork the original artwork there was amazing and it was an interesting lineup when you compare it to these guys so for one thing it's Ian Anderson and Martin Barr on guitar of course but besides that you had um, Peter John Vitesse on keyboard and he had a lot to do with arranging as well with the band and then he brought in Jerry Conway on drums from Fairport Convention and Dave Pegg who would be a really long-standing bass player with the band also from Fairport Convention. I like Fairport Convention but I never would have anticipated them being in Jethro Tull because the music is very com complex at least and progressive. But it really worked on this album. I thought Broadsword and the Beach was a, a, was a really strong record. Um, Ian Anderson is prone to say, well, it did really, really well in Germany. And it did. But this was the remastered CD that I always had, which I'm going to keep. And 
There's your track listing. It's easy to see. Beastie Clasps, Falling on Hard Times. Even my wife loves that one. Flying Colors, Slow Marching Band, really good side. Broadsword, amazing cinematic kind of opener on side two. Pussy Willow is one of my favorite Jethro Tull songs. Love that one. Great melody. Uh, watching Me, Watching You is okay. Seal Driver and Cheerio. It ends a nice little piece. And then some great uh, bonus tracks right there, including Jacqueline, one of the greatest Jethro Tull songs of all time. How that wasn't on this uh, album initially, I don't know. All right, let's uh, get into this um, move closer here. And let's get into the box. So we're going to open it up, do the best I can. So you got three CDs there, um, which are these three CDs. We'll go back to it. Uh, you got the Broadsword and the Beast, Stephen Wilson, a stereo remix right there, and associated recordings. So you got uh, 17 tracks on uh, the first disc. I mean, that's fully loaded. Disc number two, associated recordings, early 1981 sessions, Stephen Wilson. Stereo remix, remix, and further associated recordings. Disc 2's got 21 songs on there, as you can see. I mean, these are fully loaded. Disc 3, demo recordings and original 1981 master mixes and 1982 rough mixes. That's all on disc 3. And a radio advert, advertisement, 19 tracks on disc 3. They don't skimp. Uh, disc 4 and 5, well, that's going to be live in Germany, 1982, all tracks previously unreleased. Now, I'm excited about that, because forever, I have a lot of bootleg stuff. This is a favorite bootleg of mine, Jethro Tull Supergroups in Concert, 2CD bootleg, and this is also from 82, so I was hoping it's going to be new stuff, uh, and hopefully it is. This is from Friesgaard Ravensburg, Stuttgart, Germany. Uh, from the 28th to the 30th of 82 from Superstars, Supergroups in Concert. Uh, this looks like different recordings, hopefully. So that's a good treat for me. You can see the track listing. There's just four and five. And you got three DVDs. Everything that you have on those CDs is going to be on the DVDs, plus your 5.1, 4.1 surround mixes, which I love, and a whole bunch of other mixes as well. So fully loaded stuff. Let's check out. So you open it up. You got three discs right there. They put a little protector there. So that's that's a good little touch. And in this first page that you fold over is a fourth disc. So it is four discs already right in the front. This is actually DVD two, apparently. And we're gonna keep going. And you're going to see, can you see? I'll do the best I can here, guys. Sorry. I want you to get an idea of the work that goes into these booklets. Um, how many pages is this, they say? They say this is 164 pages. So when you get, like, box sets, a lot of times it's a booklet. These are books. All of these are books. You literally go to college on each one of these albums. I mean, it's extraordinary the amount of work that is put into these boxes, the amount of liner notes. And they go through, and it's a lot of graphics, I mean words. It's not just photographs, they're amazing photographs, and you're looking at it right now. But they cover, all of these box sets cover every single aspect of the album, the songwriting, the recording, the production of it, um, the artwork, the touring, who's in the band, who's the engineer, and they interview the engineers, and they interview, like, everybody about, there's the stage, we're going to talk about that, really cool stage of the Viking ship, and, uh, you know, great unreleased photos and rare photos, but it's not lightweight. I mean, this is 160 pages, give or take, just on Broadsword and the Beast. And every other one of those box sets is the same thing. They only focus on one album. So you literally go to school each one of these boxes on this particular album. Here's the song by song. 
There's a song by song. Something just fell out. So there's the song by song commentary about the writing of it, the production of it. Um, and in this case, it's song by song, not only just the songs that made the album, but the plethora of songs that didn't make the album. There's your original lyrics. Um, and then you get to the printed lyrics. Uh, you know, Ian Anderson's such a great lyric writer. Um, such a smart, I think he's a genius. You know that, that I feel that way. So it just covers every single aspect of the album, the artwork, how they created the artwork. I mean, it's extraordinary, which is why, like, you know, sometimes when I talk about other box sets, like, you know, Hackney Diamonds, by the way, like, which I just did a review of the box set. Now, I think Hackney Diamonds is an incredible album, but I paid like 60 something dollars for that box set. And all you got was one Atmos mix on a on a Blu-ray and you got a CD and then you got, you know, a book, but it was OK, a booklet. This, look at the meat that goes into this. Uh, so that's why if you saw that unboxing and somebody said, well, you look kind of disappointed. I was like, well, it's just okay. And maybe because I got high standards because like these Jethro Tull ones are amazing. The Who ones are amazing. This, by the way, right there, what we're looking at is a reproduction of the tour program. Production manual. So, you know, you, you get every aspect, you know, recording dates, where they were recording, credit. Every, no stone is left unturned. You know, it's just extraordinary. I mean, it takes me, and I read these things cover to cover, it takes me like weeks to get these. Here's the tour dates. Every tour date for the tour promoting the album. Single releases, advertisements, nothing is left to chance. And then you get to the back and here's the rest of the eight discs. This is a production. Um, it's extraordinary and sits happily right there with the rest of them. So, uh, I mean, this, I read these, you know, this is quite the book, right? If you want the history of Jethro Tull album by album, there it is. Um, so what's the only disappointment about this, uh, which I had heard and it's there. So they have three DVDs. But it's audio only. You can see it right there. DVD one, DVD two, audio only. And there's footage out there from that uh, tour. And in fact, they have some of it that was officially released. Here is another box set that had come out. Four DVDs, Jethro Tull Around the World Live. And if you look on one of the DVDs, right there, just two, Dortmund, Germany, 1982. Two songs, Pussy Willow, Heavy Horses. There was also this DVD. This is Jethro Tull, Jack in the Green, live in Germany, recorded between 1970 and 1993. A lot of stuff from Germany from Jethro Tull. But if you look at it right there, Rock Poppin' Concert, 1982. And that's uh, from the 82 tour also. There's got to be more stuff out there. And they, I don't know why they didn't put video on there, especially with the stage show, with that great uh, Viking ship, would have been a nice touch. But what are you going to do? Still great value for your money and um, great, great music. If you like Jethro Tull and you never heard Broadsword and the Beast, I definitely recommend it. I think it's a really good latter day Tull album. Is it as good as Aqualung or Thick as a Brick or, you know, these three for me? No. But it's a really strong record uh, and it deserves to do better here in the United States. And probably in the UK as well. I mean, check out Pussy Willow. I love that. But Broadsword is like watching a movie. So cinematic. Just great. Class. Fall on Hard Times. Yeah. In fact, Martin Barr just played that when we saw him live. My wife goes, I love that song. So there you go. So there you go. My latest uh, unboxing. You know, I'll only do these, I guess, when it's like a special. Because I'm always buying stuff. But uh, this was kind of fun. Live unboxing. Hope you enjoyed that. And gives you a taste of these amazing, amazing box sets. These are definitive versions of what a box set should be. This and these giant Who box sets that I have are just amazing. But the Who ones are very, very expensive. These, I mean, now they go for a ton of money. But if you get them when they come out, it's really a bargain. Um, so that's about it. Uh, there's my Ian Anderson t-shirt from back in the day. Sometimes uh, people seem to like these shirts. Can you see it? I don't know. Maybe you can. 
And uh, I wore my hot Tabasco hat because Ian Anderson's a big uh, uh, hot pepper guy, from what I understand. So uh, there you go. But still love the stones. Got my Rolling Stone socks on right there, guys. And still loving Hackney Diamonds. Hope you are as well. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Stay safe, stay healthy. If you're new to my channel, hit subscribe. Check out my other Jethro Tull videos. There's a ton of them. I am a big Jethro Tull fan, as you can tell. Uh, and I got playlists, so you can go searching on my channel for different things that you might like. But most importantly, I appreciate uh, you watching, send your comments, and I'll see you next time on the Alan Rosenberg Show.